hi everyone and welcome back so before talking about the the dynamic modules uh, what we are going to do we are going to play with uh, some more uh, fundamental aspects of nest.js like the, the using middlewares using guard what is the concept of middleware how we can register a function based middleware or an injectable class based middleware and then how we are doing this uh, exception filters pipes and auth guards these are some of the common concepts which i think you might already know i will just uh, do a quick recap how we are uh, working on that so let's say uh, how we are creating a middleware uh, middlewares are really uh, the same concept in same we have in the express middleware intercepts the request play with it allow you or disallow you to go to the route handler so here in the core we can create all these things core or shared what the middleware responsibility is what it does is it intercepts the request and you can select okay on which particular route you wanted to apply the middleware so let's say here i'm just creating a simple log middleware and what we are doing is simply trying to log something right and this logger middleware can be added to your routes how we are applying this to our main module like this domain module we can apply here is our domain module i can just implement here implement uh, nest module implement nest module so here i need to configure this I need to override, I need to add the configure method because we are adding an interface. The consumer middle consumer. So here the simple concept is consumer.register. Consumer.apply or register. There are two things. So apply. Which middleware I want I'm, I'm applying. So there is a logger middleware we have created. And to all particular routes where I'm going to apply these four routes, if you just put uh, a particular route okay i'm just applying it for users then let's say you have multiple controllers and multiple routes user courses student and all in that case this route is this middleware is applied only to the users okay similarly there are other middlewares also which is function based middleware let's say app log dot uh, middleware dot ts here I'm just creating another set of middleware. So those middlewares are like function based. Here we are creating a simple function, same as what we were doing in the express, if you remember. And then we can just uh, use this middleware in our simple module. Let's say in the domain module here we have. So here we can register multiple modules, multiple middlewares. So this is the logger middleware we have applied. Similarly, consumer dot apply what is the middleware name here is i will just change this to the app logger middleware right and a consumer dot apply app logger and here for what particular routes here you can pass even your controller so do i have a user controller what I'm saying is I'm applying this app logger middleware to all the routes which are defined inside this controller. And there are other uh, middlewares which you can just use by calling the functions. So consumer.apply. I mean we use that for the security like cross origin resource sharing uh, middleware helmet module uh, helmet module. So I will just talk about them. So this is and then there is a helmet which you need to import this doesn't come with the nest cheers and then there is a let's say you want to add app logger middleware also because this is the function also you don't need to call it this is already a function so okay and then consumer dot apply this particular middleware and for all what all routes so here you can specify user controller so these are just a simple examples like how we register our middleware right here i need to import uh, helmet and cross origin this module from the npm and instead of uh, so this is the way of registering the middleware 
Now, how you can register the middlewares at a global that you can do in the main.ts, you have an app instance. So if you remember how we, how we were doing in the express, app.use, right? So I can just do app logger. This is how you can register app.use helmet app dot use these all middlewares i can register at the app instance so this is like uh, you are registering this middleware globally right so they, these are the different ways to register a middleware and here this is really powerful because sometimes people get confused how they can register a middleware for a particular route or the if they want to exclude a particular route then how can they do it so there is a method dot apply there is an exclude also and you can specify the path where you don't want to apply this particular middleware because let's say I, I, I want to apply this auth middleware or auth middleware I'm, I'm going to create which validates the authorization header and only allows if authorization headers uh, contains the valid JWT token and contains the valid session and what I can do is I can exclude some public routes I wanted to exclude public routes so I can pass that here and then accept all the other routes i will just say okay exclude them and rest all the other routes i'm going to apply this auth middleware right so here in the exclu exclusion you can specify the path and the method i think this is contains the path and the method which is http i think Think this is a method not sorry how how can i get the methods uh, so here you can specify http get put post that should be http methods i will check the documentation what is the type we are using so let's say I'm using this uh, middleware and I wanted to exclude it for from some path. Okay, it's a request method. Request method dot this request method you can import. And here you can specify okay for this get method on this path users which I wanted to exclude. So remaining all the other uh, routes this will be applied except this one okay so this is how the middleware works and middleware is the simple use case is you will write a auth middleware where you are auth validating the auth token or just some custom token and validating it using jwt.sign or verify that this token is generated by our own secret key then only allow to access these particular routes so this is like any other middleware concept which we have in express okay so regarding middleware we, I, I want to talk about a simple example I will just I have already written this example this simple example is auth middleware implements nest middleware and it is checking if authorization header is there if not then you will just send this uh, exception missing auth header right how you are going to register this auth middleware in your domain module and let's say I wanted to exclude couple of uh, routes from this there are there can be some public APIs also on your uh, nest JS service right so here we can just play with this so this is auth routes i want to protect all the routes with this middleware excluding this public route so we have api driven health right this is the global prefix we have added this global prefix we have added in our app so if you look into our docs every api routes looks like api v1 right this is the path prefix api v1 users you can register a global here and that will be prefixed to all the API routes. Now inside domain modules, what we can do is, I want to apply this middleware to all the routes except these routes. So you exclude these public routes and include for all the remaining routes. So this is working. I thought of doing it offline and showing it to you. So here, uh, let's say this is, and here this is public route, right? So it is not checking the authorization header but this is here we are using middleware right now if i pass something some garbage then it should be able to pass it because 
here i'm passing the authorization by a token and that is validating that is passing through our middleware right so this is how you can create a middleware and you can uh, protect uh, or exclude the public routes from the middleware now next thing we are going to talk about this is all about middleware stuff now next thing we are going to talk about is the auth guards and exception filters right now if you see if we are not passing this I'm not passing it then what is the exception I'm getting message right so instead of that we can have a status code message custom message timestamp and all that can happen through the exception filters in our code so the next thing is we can create an exception filters something like this this is a bare bond simple HTTP exception filter which we have added which is going to customize our response in case of we are throwing HTTP exception and we are going to put all these things here you can just put a method okay this is the method you are passing and i can just say request dot method this is the method this is the url this is the timestamp and this is the error message you are going to get and how we are registering it in the main.ts you can say app dot use global filters right so what you are doing is you are registering this global filter http exception filter which is going to intercept your which is going to customize the response because you are throwing http exception there and here you can see the message is very important here the, the missing authorization header rest all these things we already know that status code is 400 timestamp and method is get okay similarly so this is what uh, a simple exception filter here we are creating these all these uh, building blocks these are uh, all building blocks of nest.js filters pipe middleware auth guard and all now we can also talk about auth guard and often people get confused with these two things auth guard and uh, middleware if we talk about this here this is the middleware right what mid middleware do is middleware executes any code and what it does it's part of a life cycle when you are registering a middleware it is going to be executed before you submit your request to the handler route handler right and in the middleware you need to call next if everything is fine otherwise throw the exception and middleware can be executed inside a chain like there can be multiple middlewares and they will uh, execute in a particular chain and here we have the another thing is the auth guards auth guards can be used to protect a particular uh, particular route or can be used at the controller level or at a global also like there is a way to register an auth guard globally to the whole application that i will show you first so i think that is here yes this is important like in the nest cs microservices that's another module there there is no way to register the auth guard globally like we are using app.use in our code you might have seen in the main.ts what we are doing is use global filters similarly there is something like use global guards use global interceptors use global pipes use logger these are like something which you can add globally to the whole app like uh, global guards global interceptors global pipes so we are using already global filters but in the next case uh, microservices global guards is not uh, uh, allowed that is not available so how you can do it you can create a custom provider app guard and that will be available globally to your whole app instance now what is the guard actually does right should be the important question here so guard actually has a single responsibility they determine whether request is will be handled by the route handler or not i mean it's not going to be used globally it's our case if we want to use it we already have this scenario scenario of okay validating authorization header and all using middleware so what guard can do guard can do this mini small stuff okay validating user has this particular role or not should we allow the user to access this particular guard or not for that creating a middleware is not a doesn't make sense you can still do you can create a middleware and write that custom logic but for that guard really makes sense so what we need to do is we just create a, this kind of a simple guard let's say here we are creating inside core
and here we can play with the the different cards so this is let's say api guard and what this api guard is doing is simply validating the request right here we can return true for now this would be a method which gets the request object here in the request object you might be getting some roles and there is some metadata we are going to set at the controller we will compare okay this criteria match then only we will return true so this is the auth guard how we can register the auth guard at the controller level so this is user controller and let's say this is the api where i want to create a guard so here i will say use guard and new auth guard auth guard i can import so what this auth guard is doing is nothing right right now it is just returning me the true but what it can actually do you don't need to create the instance of this nest just automatically handles it it's already injectable so use guard auth guard now there can be multiple scenarios inside auth guard that you want to validate some scenario validate some criteria let's say you might be passing you might be creating some custom metadata like okay rules allowed so this is like i'm going to create a custom metadata custom decorator that is going to feed the roles which i'm applying at the controller inside this guard and this guard will check okay what all roles can access this controller does does my request object contains that role if yes i will allow if no i will stop the request here so let's create this custom uh, decorator roles allowed and how we do it inside our shared or i can just create a decorator and here i can create this role role allowed dot ts okay so what this decorator is going to do this decorator is going to feed the data to my nest.js auth guard so i will be just using something from nest.js we are going to use nest.js common set metadata is the method which is going to help us to set the metadata by creating a custom decorator so here export const role allowed this is the decorator we are creating and here you will be passing the roles which you want to allow that's a string array this we i have done this thing uh, many times when i'm doing authorization set metadata this is we are calling and i am using this keyword roles i'm going to set this data into the roles keyword roles attribute and this decorator role allowed i will just add that to the controller and here i can pass let's say i am going to allow it only for admin let's import this thing now how we can capture this data okay at the auth guard level i need to get this admin role we already set this in the metadata so this metadata can be captured in our auth guard so this is our simple auth guard what we are going to do is uh, see we need to use the constructor here and inside constructor we need to pass the reflector because inside a reflector only we are passing using the reflector only we can access these attributes which we are setting through the metadata okay i can just use the same keyword for the reference okay reflector now inside the can activate method we got the request object okay so here we will try to access what is the roles which we are passing so this dot reflector dot get this is the method and what we are trying to get a string array this is the type we are going to get and here we are trying to get the roles from the metadata which we already have set so what we do is context dot get handler I mean, I'm just using this from the docs. This is how you extract the metadata property. And here, if roles are not supplied, let's say you have not specified any roles, that means you don't want to 
protect that API, right? I mean, it's a uh, public, widely open. Then you can just return true and let's say here, this is the first case. If you're not passing the, the roles property at the controller level, that means it's a public route. Otherwise, we will get the roles from the request object. So, I mean, I, I currently I'm not setting any roles, but it would be something like this request.user.roles. It can be, so this roles is uh, request roles, you can say, because this is coming from the request object. And here, what we can do is we can do the simple checks okay that this is matching this role or not return the request role contains uh, the roles which we are passing so that role is a strings array okay, so what we need to do is includes we can just run a loop and say is, this is a role of string what it will contain is just an array of thing like this admin admin user these are the roles we are setting and inside request role we will get a one role maybe something like this that depends on how we are doing it what is the, our implementation looks like and here we can say is if roles dot includes the role which we are getting from the request that's going to be a string if that matches that means it's going to return true then only we should be allowed to access this route so this auth guard will protect this API route like this you can pass the the roles comma separate it here it can be user editor writer whatever the role based on your uh, role based strategy okay now we can also talk about how we are doing these custom decorators uh, here let's say I'm going to create another decorator I mean auth guard is done we can also talk about some other decorators which we can create in the application. So what we are doing is you can create a custom decorators. I will take an example of a user decorator which is there in the documentation. So let's say what, what, what we do is when you are authenticated, we try to populate the data on the request object like request.user will contain the roles and all. And we, you, we want to use this user data, request.user data everywhere in our application and what we end up doing is we start using this uh, in, the, in our controllers let's say something like this user user is of uh, type any let's say so this decorator is a custom decorator we have created but the controller level I don't want to uh, just to request, access the request object and get the user instead of that I created this custom decorator that is giving me the data which is there on the request object user.data it will give me directly whatever is the content inside a request.user and from that also I'm getting the data property directly so this code may be customized like based on what you are putting inside a request.user so this is how you create a custom decorator okay so we are done with the most of the fundamental stuff custom providers interceptors middlewares auth guards and all now the next thing next big thing you can say we are going to talk about is the, the dynamic modules okay even before that i want to cover a simple topic let's say create a simple logger module here so logger you can do in two different ways nest js inbuilt logger or you can write your own custom uh, logger and register that logger to the app instance okay Let's do that in the next video.